YouTubers, this is Agent Zero, and today we're going to be doing a Nerf Gun Mod Guide on the Nerf Zombie Strike Hammer Shot Revolver Style Blaster. This is a pretty sweet sidearm, it's my new favorite over the Strong Arm or the Maverick. But today I'm going to get the most power I can out of common household appliances and tools. So, the tools you will need to conduct this mod guide are a hammer, watt head screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver, and a pair of wire cutters. The modifications we will be performing today is to cut the dart posts out of the cylinder here and also use an old trading card to boost the power of the spring. So, without any further ado, let's jump into this right. mod. Once you have the blaster unscrewed, put all the screws in a place where you won't lose them and just butterfly open the blaster. It's giving me a little bit of a tough time. Here we go. Alright, and now you got this complete shell. Set that to the side. And now we are left with the blaster's internals. Here we have the, the, uh, the revolver barrel, which stores all the darts in there, the dart pegs. The rotation mechanism, which is also acted upon by the trigger thing. Here's the plunger tube, and the hammer, and the spring. And how this works is that when you pull that back, whole plunger assembly goes down the handle which is kind of cool very efficient with space there's the tiny tiny spring and then once you fire the blaster it decompresses and the air goes out through here into the dart and the dart goes flying so that's basically how it works in a nutshell and once it's open you want to take away take out this tactical rail thing before it flies away and put that in a place where you won't lose it as well so we will now remove the blaster components and get to work on modification. All right, so here's the uh, basically the blaster itself and its functioning components. Uh, something fell off, I can put that back on later. But basically, you got the hammer here and the plunger down there. I can't really prime it because it's kind of hard to do that. This is essentially your mechanism for the blaster. There is the air restrictor right there. It is not in the cylinder. However, we will be messing around with the cylinder later. But, there it is, and we will be figuring out a way to take that out, but it could be just as simple as taking out uh, this priming assembly and popping out the air restrictor. So we'll see how that goes, and I'll show you what it looks like when it is finished. Another cool thing I wanted to show you, so when the assembly is removed, the barrel just freely spins. Kind of cool. So, to get to the air restrictor assembly, you want to unscrew this screw for the uh, face plate take it off and then you want to remove the assembly from there don't worry about the trigger but it, this takes up a little bit of playing around with but eventually get the hammer out and so there goes the spring and uh, just set the entire assembly to the side right about there here's the spring and now you can easily get to the air restrictor all right so after looking at the gun, um, the assembly I should say, after taking out the plunger system you can easily see these dart, these uh, little pegs of plastic. That is holding in the air restrictor, which is right there, that thing moving around. Uh, I believe you want to cut out these white posts and the whole thing should fall out and you'll have a straight shot from the uh, air plunger right through to the dart which will improve uh, power and efficiency in your blaster. All right, so with uh, some unique thinking, I was able to hammer out the air restrictor, so now it is a clear, clear shot. So what I did instead of cutting is that I took um, this flathead screwdriver and I put it on top of a white dart post and uh, basically I just hammered down on it, very light taps, but you know, just enough to uh, break the very weak white plastic. It doesn't take a lot of effort at all, and you won't end up damaging the blaster. And after it's all taken out, you just kind of mess, wiggle it around a bit and tap it down, and it'll eventually fall out into the assembly. Like, you'll have this piece fall out, this piece fall out, and a little spring. That is all garbage, you can throw it away. Now you got a clear shot. So now you can put this back on 
and we'll get to the next part of the modification. So before I start putting the rest of the blaster back together, here is the second part of the modification and where the trading card will come into play. So you can take a football card, baseball card, Pokemon card, or whatever card you have that you don't want to waste, and you put it, uh, you cut a hole and put it up the cylinder, and then put your spring on top of that. That'll give you extra spring compression for the blasters to get more power out of what you've already got in there. So I'm going to start putting the blaster back together, and then I'll move on to the cylinder. Okay, so now Nick, we have the uh, cylinder from the hammer shot. And so what we want to do here is to take out a cut where these two plastic orange things join together to hold up the dart post. And this will allow us to take any type of ammunition uh, as well, as long as it's a micro dart. Um, it just makes the blaster more versatile. You can put old streamlines in it or uh, put in sluggers or whatever. As long as they're micro dart shaped, it should be able to fit in this as long as we take out the dark post. So what you want to do is to take probably wire cutters and just keep cutting away at the uh, orange posts or probably take a flathead screwdriver focus, and uh, hammer it out either way. You want to remove the dart post and probably just leave a little bit of a lip so that the dart doesn't get pushed too far back, but that shouldn't matter anyway. So we will get started with that. All right, so as you can see, I have already taken out four of the five, but I figured out a way to do it and you just take a pair of wire cutters like this, get it as close down as you can to the post and let me focus the camera real quick. That looks a little bit better. But anyway, you just take the wire cutters and you cut the in there, flip it around, cut again, and it will fall right out. Now you got a clear shot, no dart post, you can fit just about anything uh, that's a micro dart down this cylinder. So the modification for that is now complete. Okay, so this is what the completed internals look like. Um, be sure to put your tactical rail piece back on there if you want to put attachments on the blaster. Um, everything should look like this. When it's put back in, everything should be flush and nice with the thing. Uh, don't forget to put screws back into there. They are all just about the same size except for this one. So as long as you keep that in mind, you are all set. And then you put the shell on just to make sure everything's flush. And if everything's flush, that means everything is where they should be. Um, I'll put all the screws back in and I'll show you how this thing works after it is fully reassembled. Quick note, uh, do not lose this piece. It is very essential for the barrel to rotate on the prime. Uh, just FYI. Uh, before you screw your blaster together, just uh, hold it together, pull back the hammer to make sure the barrel rotates, and hold on the trigger while you're holding on the priming handle, and just ease it off. Hold again, ease it off, and if your barrel cylinder is rotating like mine is right now, then you are good to go and you can screw your blaster back together. So I'll go ahead and do that because I didn't do that yet. But uh, catch you in the next clip. All right, guys, the modification of the nerve hammer shot is complete. I have five, uh, four different types of ammunition loaded into the cylinder, two elite darts, one busby dart, one regular nerve suction cup dart, and now we can fit a streamlined dart, which is the old school clip system nerf darts. And uh, due to the removal of the dart posts in the cylinder, we can now house a streamlined dart. And basically any micro dart possible, which is what I tried to show here. So we will now fire down in my workshop. I'm about 10 feet away, but we're just basing this on accuracy and power. Because, you know, Nerf guns don't really do well at far distances. Uh, they do well at close range, so I will aim down straight away. Pretty accurate. That was the Busby dart. Next is the Nerf suction cup dart. Pretty good. Streamlined dart now. Uh, that's okay. Elite darts. Very good. Uh, a little bit off. So, accuracy is not as desirable but it doesn't drop that much so don't worry there is noticeably more power and you can now house all the darts that you want in this blaster which makes it more versatile more useful and more of my weapon of choice which 
is nice. So, that is the conclusion to today's video. Uh, thanks for watching. Leave a like if you want, if you liked it. And I will be bringing up more content. So, if you want to see more of that, then subscribe to the channel for more. And uh, have a Merry Christmas, and I'll see you at the next video. Bye. Uh, one quick note before you leave. The accuracy is good. The performance is fine. I'm just kind of bad at shooting a Nerf gun when using a camera. That's better.